Hi, I'm David Mazuz, and you're watching Critical the Ghost. David Masus. Hey, how are you? Thank you so much. Are you having fun here at Pine Club? I'm having a blast, yeah. It's your first time in Puerto Rico, right? It's my first time in Puerto Rico. It's, it's, so, much, it's so beautiful, and the people here are just amazing. Perfect, perfect. Let, I'm going to take you back in time. And, and not that much, not that far away, just about three years ago, I'm going to talk about Touch. Okay. I, I, really, I really love that series because it shed the spotlight on Atasol. And I'm going to talk about Jake. And I think you were uh, around 10, 11 when you did that show? I was, uh, I was 10, I was between 10 and 11, yeah. I, I just want to ask you, how did you prepare yourself to, you know, to protate, to, 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 you know, to, to do the part, the role of Jake, which is an autism kid? He's really smart, but he has autism. How did you prepare yourself? Um, honestly, I, um, <laughs> the music's kind of loud. <laughs> um, honestly, I... I watched videos of autistic children. I um, I had a autistic specialist on set with me during the pilot. I worked with the director before we started shooting for about two weeks, um, and that's really how I did it. You know, um, I kind of took my best stab at it, and they kind of told me this is what an autistic kid would do. This is what an autistic kid wouldn't do. Um, and funny enough, they actually made Jake not autistic somewhere along the first season because they didn't want um, to have to worry about what would be realistic for an autistic child or not. But he was very, very, very heavily influenced by autism. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 looked at, I looked at other children and I, um, I studied. Let's talk a little about at, at Mr. 24 and now Mr. Destinary Survivor in NBC, Kiefer Sutherland. Um, what do you took away to you know, working with someone that stature, what, 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 what were you able to learn from him? I just want to say, first of all, that working with him was an amazing, 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 I couldn't this enough experience uh, for me. I learned so much. I think my biggest takeaway was that um, he, he taught me so much straight out, directly, and also through example. Um, but I think one of the things that I really learned was that uh, preparation is very, very, very important. You know, um, when you get to set, know your lines, know your intentions, and really um, always come prepared. And that's not even just for acting. It's for, you know, that, that I've, I've applied that to school, to, to anything I do in life. Um, you always want to bring, bring your all uh, when, when you show up. How does it feel to play an iconic character, you know, like Bruce Wayne? Bruce Wayne is huge in, DC, in DC, the DC industry. How does it feel? It's amazing. I um, I love playing Bruce Wayne. I mean, like you said, it's such an iconic character. I love. I think that's my favorite thing about Gotham is that I'm playing such an iconic character, a character that everybody knows, that everybody loves. And you know, he's um. I know Bruce Bruce Wayne. It's like, who? What if you know? Doesn't want to be Batman. Am I right? Well, let's talk a little bit about Selena Kyle, and we see Selena and Bruce getting very personal this season. Where, the, where, the, where, what can you tell us that where the relationship, that the relationship is going? Well, yeah, I think I think that relationship is very, very fascinating. Um, you know, Bruce first met Selena and was interested in Selena because he thought that she was a witness to his parents' murder and thought that she could help advance the case. Um, and you know, when when he found out that that wasn't true, when he found out that she was lying. Um, he still, they still had some sort of weird connection and you know, it was kind of um, unexplainable because they're so different and you would not ever think that two people, um, like those two people would ever be interested in each other. But they had this weird connection and so, um, and so yeah, so, so this, this season, Bruce really, uh, you know, what, what comes with growing up is, you know, romance, confidence, and he applies those things to Selena. And also I think he learned from Bruce too, you know, Bruce too, um, I mean, Bruce has known Selena for two years and was always kind of too shy to, to ask her out or to move things um, forward. Whereas Bruce, too, comes in and within like a second or a day of knowing, of even seeing Selena, he has the confidence to go up to her and to, you know, um, and by Bruce, too, I mean the doppelganger. Um, he has the confidence to just uh, like take her out and to, you know, get her in the car and to go out uh, for, for a day trip. Um, 
And so Bruce says, you know, why don't I have that confidence? And so um, that really inspires him to, to go out there and, um, and, to, and to confess that he has, he has some feelings for her. And he also, he, you know, he, I think he really wants a, a personal relationship because he, what his life has been about, his obsession over his parents' murder has kind of stopped. Um, and so he needs something else to, to you know, fill his time with. Um, and so, yeah, so, so what results is this relationship between two very different people, and we'll see the, the repercussions that that has on both characters. David, one last question. Personally, do you think that we will see you become the Batman somewhere down the line, maybe in the future? I have no idea. I hope so. I really ah, do. I wanted him to say yes. <laughs> I, um, I hope so, but it's not my call. I don't know. Thank you, David. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.